What's going on guys? How you guys doing man? Hopefully everything's going good with you. Uh, I'm about to start a Smackdown review, so please enjoy it. So the night started off with the highlight of Edge's retirement. Man, ever since 18 years old he's been wrestling. And he's not 42, he's 37. He did 15 with the WWE, four years probably with the Indies, so. So this is just pretty phenomenal. So this uh, night started off with, um, started off with Del Rio pulling off a promo. He pulled off a surprising promo pretty much. And he comes in the ring. And basically he says that, you know, with all due respect, he thinks Ed should, uh, you know, pull off a heck of a night. And he held more championships than anybody. So basically, he said Ed should relinquish the title to Del Rio. And that's what he basically said. So, I thought this was a good promo. I thought this was interesting to hear. Or Del Rio put off the most interesting promos. So, Tay Long basically says, uh. So basically, he says, um. He, Teddy Long rejects that, saying no, he's not going to get the title, because he didn't earn it yet. He has to earn it. And now Del Rio gets frustrated, and he claims, basically he claims that, oh, he's pretty glad and he's happy that he injured Edge, because now he's just been a, uh, well, I don't know what how to say. So Teddy Long saying he has to fight for the title, and you know, he, he doesn't deserve to be world champion yet. You earned the right to compete for the world title. So that's what he basically said. So he said, then uh, Del Rio comes back. And I thought this was interesting. I personally found it interesting. And then he said he's glad that Edge is retiring. And that's what he basically said. He said he's glad Edge retired. But this was a great promo. I thought this was good. And I was pretty excited to hear. Which was pretty interesting. So after that whole promo we had... Kofi Kingston against Zeke, Big Zeke Jackson. I thought this was a good match. This was a heck of a match right there. So I'm going to highlight it there. Uh, Ezekiel gets a huge upper hand, how he dominated the match, basically. But then Kofi Kingston gets up, other upper good hands. He has a good upper hand in the match. This was actually a great match. Kofi Kingston quick this with Ezekiel Jackson using his big weight and stuff like that. So this was, this was pretty interesting to hear, even though... Um, we'll, Ooh, Kofi Kingston was just phenomenal there using um, his high flying ability, which was just, I was just found this incredible. He was just a phenomenon. Whoop! And then, whoop! Drop kick. This was just incredible. I thought this was phenomenal. Whoop! And then moving on after that, he eventually um, lifts, uh, he lifts Kofi Kingston, throws it to the core. I was like, what the heck was that? That actually shocked me too, because because um, we didn't even see that coming. So I thought this was I thought this was pretty exciting. This was pretty good. This was something that you know we didn't expect. So they try and do something spicy there, which may show signs of the core breaking up. They're doing the same thing with Lake Pool, which is nothing new, or well, not really anything new, which is um, getting kind of repetitive. And they tried to do the SOS. I thought that I thought Kofi Kingston would end the match there. But, you know, luckily enough, it backfired with help. Then he does the rock bottom choke slam, which got him the one, two, the three. And then Ziku Jackson throws in a promo claiming that he's the definition of domination. But Ziku Jackson, I think, deserves to be world champion. I think he has an opportunity there to be world champion. So, that's what he says, he's a prerequisite of domination. And that's what we quite frankly got. So... So after that whole buzz, um, we had a promo of Edge retiring, or Edge's career over. And then um, after that, we had counseling therapy with Lake Cool. Um, I don't know why they keep doing this cliffhanger stuff with Lake Cool. I mean, I, I think it wouldn't make sense for them to break up because they have too many faces on SmackDown. Unless the Bell Twins finally start taking trips to SmackDown because now they're the Divas Champion. They could go anywhere. Layla was the last reigning women's championship, the first British born to be women's championship, just like Sheamus was the Irish. This is just pretty silly, man. I think um, I think Layla Michelle McCool is just claiming that he's still in the spotlight. 
And Jada was right. I think that's what they exactly predicted. And they're going to split up soon. But I hate this buzz of them splitting up. It's just kind of way out. And now they're claiming they're lesbian. Like, now they try to be lesbian. Like, how silly is that? They holding hands and things like that. That was just pretty silly. They try to be equals. Wow, Michelle McCool is arrogant. I don't know how arrogant she is in real life, but... You know, she has a huge uh, chip on her shoulder. That's what they're basically showing. Now they're just starting to get a little chippy. And then say what time next week. Hopefully this counseling develops. So after that, Cody Rhodes pulls out the promo. Uh, and then Cody Rhodes claiming that, you know, his good looks will let World Heavyweight Child title bring enough to boost his good looks. Or will he be dashing again? And, and you know, the question left is mysterious. I don't know, because Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes still feeling bitter about, you know, his broken nose, but hopefully we get back into this whole dashing promo sooner than later. But even though this dark citizen stuff is just good, Cody Rhodes just makes my day like always. So, eventually soon after this promo, Rey Mysterio comes out and tries to attack uh, Cody Rhodes, dashing Cody Rhodes, and eventually nails him the 619, which was just incredible. The great, great, great promo from Cody Rhodes. He's just entertaining. Hopefully Cody Rhodes comes back to his dashing looks and they can help recover Lake Cool. It could be Daniel Bryan, Gail Kim versus Cody Rhodes and one of the members of Lake Cool. I will build that fan. That will be my favorite fantasy alliance. Unless, because that PlayStation 2, I can't put Layla in. Layla's not in the video game, which is why is she in the video game, which kind of frustrates me. But then we have the next match. Rey Mysterio versus Drew McIntyre. Which is just um, phenomenal. Which is just a phenomenal, exciting match to check out, which is going on. After after a promo from Austin Kong flinging off the doll, I gotta watch her in FCW and see how she's doing. Cause they're, they're, I think they're trying to develop a good person, a gimmick for her. But it's, it's bringing a lot of shock value for Austin Kong, but I know they're in no rush. But we'll see what happens. So, Rey Mysterio starts off with a good upper hand, then eventually still Cody Rhodes... Um, Cody Rhodes comes back with an upper hand, which was a good match. This is actually one of the best matches of the night. But unless they give Cody Rhodes, why did they give Cody Rhodes a match? Why did he have a match? Instead, why do we have a Divas match? And why are we trying to do something big with Lay Cool? Send them to Raw already and get Bella Twins on SmackDown, Alicia Fox on SmackDown. One, well, anyway, um, Drew McIntyre just. This was, match was actually very good. I was hoping Drew McIntyre would get a win, but you know, Rey Mysterio has to win to boost up his character. He's been doing this for, he's now like 36 years old. He started when he was 28. This was, he was pretty young. And, ooh! Look, oh! Oh, good upper hand, but the best part was the end. Was the end, and then after uh, Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre gets thrown off the ring, we uh, come back from commercial break, which was good match. Seems like this is going to be an interesting match because it looks like they're dragging on this match pretty longer. Which I was impressed by because they're making put a lot of value into Drew McIntyre. He's been doing this ever since he was 15 years old from England because they all wrestle at 15. They do wrestling there. It's so big there in London. But I don't know if I'll visit London someday and do wrestling there. That will be phenomenal. But I wasn't good at it. I don't know how good I will be. But anyway, um, Cody Rhodes and uh, Drew McIntyre, you know, we put on this great match. And then, ooh, look at Rey Mysterio. Look like, ooh, oh, backbreaker. A sick backbreaker right there. You tell Rey Mysterio landed on his feet. Nope. He kicks out. Looks like they do, do really work out. Like, there's no way he could survive that huge, sexy backbreaker. And, oh, Drew McIntyre with an upper hand. And then a little bit later on, we have... Dang, this looks like legit. This this match was just phenomenal. They put a lot of value, and they took that match definitely seriously. This is a definitely a match we want to see. Drew McIntyre just played great heel. He actually played an incredible, incredible heel, which I was impressed by. And then, you know, Rey Mysterio was just very phenomenal. I give him props for that, I would have said. And whoop. Whoop. And, oh man. Look, Rey Mysterio. Whoop. I thought this was phenomenal. And then the end actually was great. And, whoop. And 
then oh my word, whoop! Look at this, Drew McIntyre. Oh, what a vicious boot to the face, man! The Drew McIntyre. They actually sold the moves very excellent, though I have to say. And after Rey Mysterio tried to do the whoop, whoop. Oh, V vs DDT. But yeah, I gotta say this. No offense, but that pick cover looked oddly homo. Homo, I have to say. You see how he picked up Rey Mysterio grabbing the arms and stuff, and he's like on top of him, which was just mad hilarious. Rubbery guys just sweating all over each other. But yeah, after that we had um, oh a body slam right after six one nine. So you go, oh he nails the six one nine right. Just oh man, this was just phenomenal, phenomenal six one nine. I was just so blown away by it. And then, whoa, Cody Rose tumbles. I mean, Drew McIntyre tumbles. One, two, three. Rey Mysterio picks up the win. So, moving on after that, we had a retirement speech from Edge, which I may talk about in my next video. But, basically, he, he, he talks about all his history, uh, which everybody talks about. I think this was just one of the best history of his career. It's hard that he relinquishes the title. I think by the time he was 31, he was able to get this huge push which I think the push that he really earned. So, it was surprising that he invited his mom over, which made it even more very special that he brings his mom along for this big night and this big moment. I really think um, this was just, this was just something that, you know, that really just touched everybody. And um, I think this was just pretty special. This was just a very special moment for me. I think that was just a lot. And then, um, Edge decided to entertain and do the interest. I thought somebody was going to come out and attack Edge. But I'm glad they took this retirement very seriously. Because if they do deck with it, then they're really messing with, They're really hurting themselves. So, Edge, you know, running out in his pimp suit, doing his interest again in his suit. I was just pretty impressed by it because, you know, he was just really burning a lot of enthusiasm, if you feel what I'm saying. Which this was just pretty impressive. So then he comes out and um, he decides to do his interest again, which was just, you know, I think this was the best night of the show. But hopefully they start picking up rating sooner than later, because this would be a disaster if he doesn't, I have to say, to say the least. Because um, apparently, um, apparently for Christian to get a push, if they start booking matches right, then they can get good ratings. Like, Cody Rhodes could have a match instead of a useless Stevens match, where they try and do something big. Hopefully, um... So, this was just the best moment for Edge. And then the part where he invited his mom along, and then they show a clip of his mom. I was so blown away, because I knew Edge looked up on Wikipedia. Edge did not see a single bit of his father, and Edge was, uh... Edge was the single mom. Edge's mom was the single mom, and he was raised by a single mom. And he grew up with his brother, too, but, you know, he grew up in single parenting. He was an only child. He had a brother, but for the most part. Luckily enough, his mom came along, and this was just the best moment, because, you know, Edge uh, was a single mom, and uh, apparently this was the... I have to repeat that, sorry. But anyway, this was just a phenomenal moment. This is the best touching, realistic moment. He was able to put on a good show. But, you know, even though they have to feel the pain, this is one of the pains they have to feel because Edge had to retire because, you know, the neck injury, a legit neck injury. So, um, I think this was the this was the best retirement speech. And, and, you know, I heard he botched thing last night on Raw, but lucky enough they didn't show that. He said, in case you missed it. And you see, that's his brother right there, and that's Edge. So, he does look like Edge. But currently he has to relinquish the World Heavyweight title after winning the WWE title from John Cena, man. That was just, that was just my best moment of the heel, especially when he was dating Lita after the affair did happen, which was just a mind-blowing moment. So, you know, like I said on Raw, this was like one of the best moments, the best retirement speeches, especially when he had to give up his title. This is the best realistic moment. Glad it wasn't an angle because it was perfect. I don't know what's next for Edge.